Wiz, first of all, man, it's been great to reconnect with you, whether it was uh, at Penn State last year, just chatting on the field, or actually getting a chance to spend some time with you in Tuscaloosa a couple months ago. What's this journey been like for you, getting back into college football, being an analyst at Penn State for a couple of years, and now a special assistant to the head coach at Alabama? You know, it's been really good. A lot of it, it, The college game has changed so much. Um, to have the opportunity to go back and be involved with that has been, you know, really kind of special for me. It's just such a different game from the NFL and um, being able to see and interact with guys at a different stage in their careers and also, you know, just the way it's played on the field has been different. So it's really been a great experience, and I can't, you know, be thankful enough for Penn State and for Coach Saban here at Bama for allowing me to do that. What's it like? I know you've known Nick for a while what, what's it been like to work with him and watch his process and you know how different is the way he does things how different or similar is it to the way you did things either here in Arizona or in Tennessee as a head coach you know I think we came up a little bit of similar trees um he uh he does things he's very structured here does a great job with these guys really works them hard you know, make sure that they're prepared week in, week out. And I think he, he, he does a great job of identifying the human element of it, you know. And, and uh, I grew up kind of under Joe Gibbs, Dan Henning, which were similar in philosophy of, of how you work on the field. And, but I do think it's important to establish relationships with your players because I think a lot of times when you do that, you know, they'll, they'll play hard for you. So it's, it's been great seeing how Coach does it because you see a, a man that's been – so successful for so long, especially, you know, here at Bama and you think, you know, what's the, what makes it so special? And it's really, you know, his belief in the program and how you do things and staying, um, staying to the course, I should say, doing it. It is really different and unique. Every time that we have an Alabama game, coach is great with us. I know he's great with the scouts um, the SEC in general, but I think Alabama specifically, and I'm sure that has been interesting for you to kind of see it up close just because it is so different and you can see and understand why they've won as much as they've won. Yeah, there's no question about that. You know, a lot of times I think back to my days in Pittsburgh as an assistant coach with, with Bill Cower, you know, and And Bill Bill Cowher had a plan for how he was going to go about doing everything from practice to, you know, off season and vows to how they picked in the draft, everything. And and obviously, you know, the organization supported him and um, that was, and he's been very successful. He was very successful doing it that way. So I learned a lot um, from him. And, you know, I think when we first came to Arizona, we kind of tried to implement a lot of those things and, and there were some pretty good years in there with, um, you know, players that we drafted as well as building the team that way. And it was some exciting times. So I just really value the time that I've had around some pretty good coaches and, and being able to learn from them. And Wiz, I definitely want to get to your time here in Arizona, spend some time talking about uh, what were some of the best moments in franchise history with you here, but just a couple more on uh, Bama you know, you guys might be the best team in the country right now, the way you're playing after the Georgia win. Um, take us inside a little bit. What's this season been like? You know, I had you guys in early October. You were a couple games removed from the loss to Texas, but, you know, the way you guys are playing now with the miraculous win in the Iron Bowl to then beating a Georgia team that hadn't lost in a couple years, uh, what has this year been like to experience that low early on, which Alabama doesn't usually have, to uh, the high that you guys are at right now going into the college football playoff against Michigan at the Rose Bowl? You know, I think a lot of it had to do with the where we were with quarterback coming into camp. You know, we had lost Bryce, who was a tremendous player. I know he hasn't had the uh, greatest year so far in Carolina, but just from watching him on tape and seeing him play, he's an incredible player and a tremendous player. And I think that when you, when you have a college program that has been so successful with all these quarterbacks, and then you, you don't have a, you know, a starter for sure coming in, Jalen Milrow at the time was competing for the spot. And, you know, it creates a sense of unknown 
and you go into the first couple of games thinking we're still trying to figure it out because it's hard to get an idea of who's going to take that spot over in just a short few weeks of training camp. And, you know, obviously I think everybody knows or at least should know that we started Milrow. We had a little setback in the second game, set out the third game. And then ever since he came back from that point, you know, we've kind of grown with that. So I think a little bit of it has been the team learning about how we have to win and how we have to play. And it's been pretty cool to see how Coach Saban has navigated that and how he keeps the, these, these young men motivated. But I tell you what, they're very competitive, very hardworking young men. And, you know, as soon as we kind of figured out how we were going to play it, what direction we were going to go, we've just gotten better and better every week. Now, obviously, the Auburn game, was a, as rivalry games are, was a tough game, and we made a play at the end. But sometimes that's what you have to do. And uh, it was all, definitely a big win for us going against Georgia. Because when you see that team come on the field and you, you know they've won 29 straight, you just think, wow, this is really a good football team. But I think Coach Saban does really a great job of keeping guys focused, keeping them mo- motivated, and, and we work. We really work at it. And, and I think, you know, I give our players a lot of credit and the coaches here a lot of credit for, you know, how they prepare and then when we get on the field in game day, how these guys perform. Kenny, what were the emotions like after the 4th and 31? I'm watching it on television. I had Texas, Texas Tech Friday night on ABC, so I was actually home uh, on a a rare college football Saturday actually watching football. (laughs) And I remember watching it live in complete shock. Um, What was it like for you experiencing that uh, given – I mean, it's one thing to convert on fourth and seven. Okay, fourth and goal from the 12. But fourth and 31 with under a minute to go to win the game. Yeah, we we had a play that we'd been saving all year for that down and distance. So (laughs) it was easy. We just called it up and it worked. You know, I mean, it, it was obviously unbelievable. I mean, you know, when you add the fact, like you said, it's a rivalry game. There's a lot of history with Alabama Auburn and some crazy things happening at the end of the game. And we were reminded of that going into the game, just of all the different times where at the very, at the end of the game, you know, there've been big swings and momentum changes the outcome of the game going in though. I got to give our guys a lot of credit. We didn't have any panic, you know, getting to fourth and 31 was certainly not what we wanted to be, but we had a play that we worked in practice and it didn't quite work out the way it was in practice, but, I think one of the things that's important in that type of situation is that we felt like we had worked it. We felt like we had a plan and it makes our guys a little bit easier to perform in that because it's like, okay, this isn't foreign territory, even though it's only been in a walkthrough or in a competitive period in practice. So, you know, I I think you learn a lesson about how you got to continue to rep those things and work those plays and, even though they don't always come out the way they des- they're designed, at least your players feel like in that situation they're able to make that play because even though it was practice, you've done it before. You know, I've been uh, in this organization here with, with the Cardinals Wiz for 22 years and pretty familiar with uh, the history prior to my arrival. Obviously, it's been around for over 100 years. But when I think of the legendary figures in – Cardinals history, you're in that pantheon. You, you were the head coach of the team that went to the Super Bowl. And I, I'm just curious, how often do you think back on your time here in Arizona and all that you and your staff accomplished because you accomplished quite a lot? Yeah, I think back on it quite a lot. We we lived in Arizona even after we were not working there anymore for a while. It's a great place. We've always You know, we've always enjoyed it there. I think, you know, one of the things that I remember most vividly is when we got the, excuse me, when we got the stadium full in home field advantage. That first playoff game when we played the Falcons um, was unbelievable. And then to get the NFC championship game there was, you know, truly amazing. So a lot of good memories. You know, we I, we had a lot of people that worked very hard there with us in the organization. I give Michael a lot of credit. There were a lot of things that we needed to get done that he was, you know, very helpful with. Lisa Manning was 
definitely a big piece of that puzzle. She helped us out and, and a lot of other guys that were there. So it was neat to see how the team responded because we changed things a little bit, how we practiced, you know, and a lot of that was from things that I had learned from Coach Cower in Pittsburgh. And it was tough at first, but we got a couple of leaders like Darnell Dockett, a couple of those guys that bought in, and that helped it. And it was really pretty cool. But, you know, I think the, the biggest thing that I remember is just how much, how excited the fans were and what a support they were for us. But, I mean, we actually had a great home field advantage there, and it helped us be successful. And, and I, I do believe, you know, obviously in the championship game, that made a big difference for us. So yeah, I, great memories of the time in Arizona. Yeah, and, and, you know, obviously you had won a Super Bowl in Pittsburgh as an assistant coach, so you had, had that feeling uh, of euphoria after you win it, and you know what that's like. Um, we have a picture of a shot of you holding the NFC Championship trophy. Do you remember what was going through your mind? Because I remember what was going through my mind. Like, my goodness, it's it's happened. They they did it. They they're there. They're uh, one game away from being world champions. Um, is that something you recall? What you felt like when you were holding that trophy and you knew that you were going to the Super Bowl? Yeah, I, you know it's funny. Because uh, I've seen that picture a number of times and, and thought about it. You know, one of the things that I remember so vividly about that time was the Thanksgiving Day play, the Thanksgiving Day game where we played Philadelphia and uh, they kicked our butts and it was bad, you know. And uh, when we got into a situation where we were playing them for the NFC Championship, um, nobody thought we had a chance. In fact, there was a lot of talk of, you know, that we were the worst playoff team, worst team ever to go to the championship game. And, that you know, that there was a lot of that. So I think that our players stayed focused and, you know, we got better um, as the playoffs went along. I think going to Carolina and winning a game there when they were the number one seed really made us believe that, that we could compete. Even though we felt like we could, we won the first playoff game against Atlanta that was a big win for us. I think as much as the crowd gave us a home field advantage there, you know, we felt like we could play. But going to Carolina and winning on the road, which is tough against the number one seed, I think put us in position, and it was awesome. You know, going in, we knew what Philly was about, and we also had a little bit of a chip on our shoulder from um, having played them before. So it was uh, it was something that was – when I, we brought that trophy up, I just felt like – you know, how far we've come and how awesome it was to be in that spot, you know, especially when there weren't a lot of people that thought we deserved to be there or that we could get there. Going to Tampa now in, in Super Bowl 43, um, I was really hesitant to write anything down, Wiz. Like, I didn't want to write down because at the end of the game, you want to make sure whatever you say, if you win the Super Bowl, that you nail it. Uh, in my position, because it's going to be replayed forever. So you don't want to screw it up. But I also thought I would jinx the team if I wrote anything down. So I didn't. I wrote nothing down until the Larry Fitzgerald touchdown that put the team ahead. And I thought I better have – and I would thought about it, but I just didn't want to put pen to paper. So I finally did. And then, you know, a few plays later, things changed, and you know, I ripped it up and threw it in the trash. Um, but – what do you remember about the moment where Fitz is running into the end zone? Did you think at that point, were you like, hey, guys, we got to settle down? Yeah, we have the lead. We still have two and a half minutes to go. Or were you starting to think, wow, we might, we might pull this off? Well, the one thing I thought about when he crossed the line was we left too much time on the clock. Um, Pittsburgh had a good team. And, uh, you know, in those two-minute situations, you never know what can happen. Um, felt really good about the position that we were in. Our team was playing hard. We'd done a great job. You know, we'd faced adversity in that game early, especially with the halftime play. Oh, my gosh. You know, that was one of the things that could have really taken the gas right out of us. But, you know, we bounced back from that, put ourselves in a position where we could take the lead, which nobody thought we were going to be able to do. So, obviously, you know, you start thinking, okay, we got to keep them out of the end zone. we got to keep them out of the end zone. And, um, you know, it just, you got to give Pittsburgh credit. They made plays and 
that's what you have to do in those situations. And I'll never, you know, be sorry that we were in that position, even though it hurts a lot. But, um, you know, you just wish that maybe we could have had one more bounce go our way in that game and to have won a Super Bowl for the city and for, for the Big Wells. We were in Pittsburgh a couple weeks ago for the Cardinal Steelers, and you walk into the press box, and the first thing you see is a giant blow-up of the San Antonio Holmes touchdown. You turn the corner, you walk down the hallway to go into the press box, you actually enter the press box at Acrisure Stadium, formerly Heinz Field, and you see the same picture. It's everywhere. It's obviously one of the most iconic plays in Super Bowl history. What was it like in your position witnessing that and seeing that were you in disbelief um you still had time after that so obviously you had to regroup and think about offensively uh what the plan was but do you recall that moment at all well I mean you you know you'd say as a coach coach speak would say well you always got to prepare for those situations and no but you know to come as far as we had come and to have the lead that late and then you know when that happened it's it's tough it really is And, uh, you know, you feel as much for our players and our fans that we were that close and, you know, we just couldn't quite pull it off. But, you know, it's, it is, while as devastating as it was, I wouldn't, wouldn't give it up for anything because it was great to be in that position, especially, um, as an Arizona Cardinal, you know, which nobody expected us to be there. It was, it was tough. You know, they had good players. They were a very good football team. The quarterback, obviously, is going to be a Hall of Famer, I'm sure. Ben was a good player. and uh, San, uh, Excuse me, San Antonio made a, an amazing catch, even though I still don't think his right foot was down. But, um, you know, I, it, it's as tough as, it, as tough as it is, that's part of the game. And, uh, you know, if we hadn't uh, made that turnover right before the half, it might have been a different story. So you never know how those things are going to work out. I'm just proud of the way our guys fought and the way the coaches – work so hard to get there just wish we could have finished it off for the fans but you know we're definitely proud of what we accomplished that year and especially being in the Super Bowl which was awesome the next year you guys accomplished something that at that stage was very rare usually the team that lost the Super Bowl did not get back even to the playoffs the following season not only did you guys do that you won a playoff game and it was one of the greatest playoff games uh, in postseason history, just a fantastic overtime win against a young Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. How challenging, uh, Wiz, was that for you guys to get back at it after the Super Bowl loss, get the team focused on getting back? And look, you guys lost to a Saints team that you know was playing as well as anybody, obviously, at the time and went on to roll uh, to a Super Bowl win. Well, I think, you know, it's always hard to – because everybody says that the team that loses the Super Bowl doesn't make it back to the playoffs. And at, at, our, at that time, we no team had ever done that. So, you know, while the excitement for our team is good that we made it to the Super Bowl, then you're also facing the idea, well, this is going to be a tough year for us. But, you know, I give I give our, our older players, our veterans, and we had some good young players a lot of credit for the leadership during that year. You know, we had some ups and downs that season, but once again, we got on a roll and we played some good football, especially um, late in the year. You know, I think the the one thing that really stands out to me from that year was we were playing Green Bay in the last game of the season. And, you know, we we had a chance to get a bye, actually, in the playoffs. If I think it was the Giants game, Dave, maybe you remember better than me. It was somebody else who was playing before us. And if if the Giants had lost or won, I can't remember which one it was, we would have gotten a bye. So the Green Bay game would have actually been meaningless. But turned out we didn't get that break. So so we knew that we were going to play the next week and play Green Bay, as you know, as weird as that was. So um, you know, we actually made a decision to pull some of the things we were doing in our game plan, and we got crushed in that game, which you know put us in a bad position. Yeah for going into the playoff game the next week, but it turns out it, it, it uh, worked out for us. And, you know, I think the one thing about it being at home, once again, with the fans made a big difference for us, but I think going through that year and some of the, you know, we played well at parts of the year, but um, I think it steeled us or it hardened us a little bit towards, you know, people out there saying you can't do things, especially since we had 
gotten to the Super Bowl the year before, which nobody thought we were going to do, and getting back to the playoffs, which absolutely nobody thought we were going to do, you know, it kind of motivated us, uh, motivated us a little bit. And, you know, that was just a tremendous game. We played, Kirk played well. I think he had actually more touchdown passes than he had incompletions, which is Correct. to me an unbelievable stat. But um, it was great to see our guys respond, you know, and, players make plays and it was a great year. You know, I wish that we hadn't have played New Orleans and we hadn't, uh, Kurt hadn't have gotten nicked up early in that game. Um, but it was awesome to be able to do that and go back. And I tell you what, a lot of it goes back to the fan support that we had because we really had home field advantage, you know, there in, um, in the stadium. And that's something that's so important. I think when you've got that, because if you think about the, just a division opponent in Seattle and how tough it is to play there because of the noise. It really helped us. And it was, it was really special to win that game and, and see the fans and the excitement. So, you know, that, that means a lot to the players. It meant a lot to us. And it's really one of the things I look back on as one of my favorite games, you know, in, in my time. You mentioned Kurt, you've coached a lot of hall of famers and, and whiz you deserve a lot of credit for, your input into the playing careers of those guys that have been inducted into the Hall of Fame or one day will be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Specifically with Kurt, is there a story or a moment that stands out? I'm sure there were a lot of them, but anything you remember that really stands out about your time together? Yeah, I don't know if Kurt's going to be happy that I tell you about this, but you know, the, the, uh, the first year that I came there, Kurt, Kurt was the backup and Matt was, was our starter. And we, uh, we were committed to go with Matt. But one of the things that um, we found out early was that Kurt was really, really good at no huddle. Um, so, you know, and Matt was a young quarterback and hadn't done a lot of that. So even though I know that was tough on Matt, um, during that course of the early part of that year, we were platooning Kurt with Matt in the games. And, um, when we went two minute or we went no huddle, we put Kurt in. And the thing that I can remember vividly is every time we did that, we got a spark and we played really well. So it, it, you know, we went through that for a couple of games and then unfortunately Matt got hurt and um, Kurt took over and we just kind of the first year, this was the first season that we were there. You know, we ended up, I think it was eight and eight and Kurt played well down the stretch. I know this is a long story. I'm getting to the point. But going into the next season, we thought what would be fair for everybody was to have an open competition for quarterback. And, you know, Matt wasn't happy. Kurt wasn't happy because both of them felt like they deserved the job. And, and, I, and I get it. But, you know, it's, it's hard to navigate that position as a coach, especially because every single day, guys like you ask us, well, who's, who's winning the competition? <laughs> so, you know, we get that over and over. But I'll never forget one day – Kirk came in, and I guess after his time in New York or, you know, even when his first part there at Arizona, he didn't necessarily feel like he'd gotten a clear chance to prove himself. He came into my office, sat down in the chair in front of me, slammed his hair hand down on the desk and said, if this competition's fair, I'm going to win it. And I was just sitting here thinking, this is a guy that's been to a Super Bowl, but his competitiveness made him feel like he had to do that because he was so passionate about winning the job and what it meant to him. And, and this is no disrespect to Matt. Matt worked hard too, but, you know, Kurt, it was pretty impressive to see a guy like that where he was in his stage of the year come in with that kind of passion. And, and you know, I definitely believe that's what contributed to him having a Hall of Fame career, in my opinion. We all got to witness that year, not just the excellence of Kurt, but Larry Fitzgerald and the incredible run, the unprecedented run that he had all the way through the Super Bowl in terms of catches and uh, receiving yards and touchdowns. What he had done had not been done prior to that. And I'm just curious, do you think back to, was there a moment or a game or a situation where you remember Larry taking that next step? Because before you guys arrived, I mean, we knew Larry was good. He was obviously very talented and he had accomplished a lot at a young age, but he was 20 when he came into the NFL uh, he still had, and he would tell you, a lot to learn. Do you remember when it flipped, when things changed for Fitz? 
Yeah, you know, when he came up to me and he slipped me a little cash and said, look, every time you get me the ball, I'm going to give you some money, <laughs> it kind of flipped. And we started throwing it to him. So, no, uh, you know, I think that uh, obviously it's easy to say the, the, Charlotte, the game in, in, against Carolina and Charlotte, the playoff game, where uh, he had – he just – he carried the whole team. He broke out and, you know, he was a great player. But – in in that arena, you know, in the playoffs, in front of a national audience, to see what see him just take the game over, um, I think was was very indicative of the kind of player he was. He worked for a long time, always making catches. Had the greatest hands I've ever seen. Great job of any time you threw a ball up to him in the end zone, he was going to get it. But here's the thing that people don't know: Larry worked his tail off. I mean, every day in practice, he would not miss a practice. You know, and he was constantly working on getting better and constantly asking, you know, what do we got to do and talking about different routes. And and it's easy for a quarterback to get comfortable with a guy whose catch radius is so big. And obviously um, our quarterbacks did that because Larry could catch any kind of ball. I remember fourth and 20 against Dallas on, I think it was Christmas. You know, he made a play where we were out of the game and we ended up winning it. So it was just over and over and over that you saw Larry – make plays and, and just be a tremendous leader for us. So, um, you know, he, listen, he worked hard at it. That's the thing that people don't know or that people don't see. He wouldn't, you couldn't get him out of practice. Even when he was banged up, Larry was going to go out there and practice just because he felt like that's what it was all about for him and how he had to get better. So, you know, we we're very lucky that we had a chance to see Larry in his prime and, you know, he certainly helped us get the success that we had. So, Tremendous amount of respect for him, and I can't wait for him to get in the Hall of Fame, which I know he will because certainly deserved. Kenny, just a few more. We'll let you go, uh, and I appreciate the time very much because I know you got a lot to do to get ready for Michigan uh, in the college football playoff. Uh, is there a particular player or players that you look back on that you took great pride in seeing them develop, either young guys that were here with you that went on to succeed or you know, veterans like Kurt that resurrected their careers here? with Arizona, anybody particular that, that stands out in that regard that, that brought you great joy to see them have success because of either what they overcame or just your relationship with them? You know, that's a tough one just because um, there have been so many of them. And, you know, I've been lucky to be around a lot of great players. I think Steve Breston is a guy that I would remember mentioning because we were playing, um, gosh, Seattle the last game of the year. And, he got a, He ended up catching a ball at the end of the game that gave him a thousand yards for the year. And this was a kid that we drafted in the fifth round that came in that worked his ass off, and then was you know one of those group of whenever you have three receivers that all have over a thousand yards receiving, you know it's a pretty amazing accomplishment. Maybe not so much now, but it was at that time. And you know to see a young guy like him who did so much for us as a special teamer, whether it was a returner, you know playing teams. Um, you know, and then to see him have a thousand yard season when nobody really expected it, especially where he was drafted, it's pretty incredible. You know, it shows it shows what a good job our scouting department did in drafting some of those players, which I think helped set us up. And uh, you know, he just won. There's so many of them. I mean, you, it'd be easy to say Larry Darnell Dockett. You know, a lot of those guys like that. It would be very easy to say that. But you know, I just remember how special that was for him and what that meant. And that's really what the game's all about. And that was really neat. How, how much do you keep tabs on the Cardinals? And I, I know obviously you're, you're busy, uh, particularly on Saturdays. Uh, I don't know how much you know you guys are watching tape or just watching games on Sunday or a combination of that. But do you keep tabs at all on how the Cardinals are doing these days? Yeah, I do. I try to watch them. You know, I'm still a fan. Um and I and I try to watch it when I can. I don't. We don't get a chance to watch many because Sunday's generally a pretty busy day for us trying to get ready for the next opponent. But I, I will definitely keep up with the scores and you know what's going on and how they're doing. So because you know just our time there was so good, was so great. I mean we we're very thankful for our time there, and you know we certainly miss Arizona. So um, but I don't. You just just don't get a chance to really follow them as much as you'd like to. When you came here, the offense was different. A lot of players had to adjust, and many did and excelled. Larry was one of them. 
Uh, I'm just curious if you ha- would have any advice for a player like Kyler Murray who's in a new offense. It's, he's doing things he had not done before. He's coming off an injury. How challenging is that for a player that's had the success that he's had, whether it's at Oklahoma winning a Heisman Trophy or being in the Pro Bowl as a young NFL player to get adjusted to the newness of a coaching staff, a new offense, a new philosophy, a new culture? You know, I, it's, it's hard to say because you don't really have much – you know, it's hard to do it from a distance. Yeah. Even yeah. you don't have the time to invest in it. I, I know he's he's a talented player. We we scouted him coming out and thought he was thought he was a really good player. He obviously is gifted from the ability to be able to throw the ball as well as you know extend plays. So you know, I just think that it's it's kind of out of my area of expertise since I haven't really studied it to know. I yep. just wish them all the best. You know, just from the standpoint of, it's tough. I mean, it's a tough league, and you gotta, you know, it's tough to win games, and you just gotta stick to it. I guess is the best way to say it. We were we we built it. You know, the first year we were, we were uh, eight and eight, which was a big thing for us, and and I think our, you know, we just kind of continued to grow and develop. Wish we could have <laughs> had done a little better in the latter part of it, but um, you know, like I said, I. I can't really say what, you know, I, I respect him as a player and I know he's done some good things there and certainly hope that they have a good, good end to the season for him. I know probably the last thing you're focused on right now is your future. I'm just curious, um, you know, you think about, and obviously you've accomplished a lot as a head coach in the NFL, as an assistant coach in the NFL as well. You think about, you know, Sark, Lane Kiffin, Kirby Smart, their experience working with Nick Saban and then, you know, becoming a head coach and a successful head coach. Uh, have you thought at all beyond this year in terms of, you know, what, what's next for you, whether you're going to stay and how much you enjoy doing what you're doing? Do you think at all about, you know, getting back into the NFL or, you know, trying to be a head coach again? Uh, Cause you've done a lot of it already. How much of that, you know, is something you think about or are you just kind of in the moment enjoying what you're doing? You know, I got in the latter part of my career in the NFL. I got pursued by a uh, couple of colleges to come in and play. In fact, I actually got offered a job with one of them. And you know, I, I thought, well, this is intriguing. So I, I've spent the last couple of years um, trying to see what this is all about. And it was very fortunate that Coach Franklin at Penn State gave me an opportunity to come in there and see that. And then, you know, obviously being here at Alabama is incredible. Just being able to be around these guys and see how they work and you know be able to contribute in whatever way I can has been cool but you know it's also um I think it's kind of I'm kind of feeling like I'd like to get back to the NFL maybe and experience some of those type of things with the knowledge that I've gotten from being in college ball that could help but you know you never know how those things work out I'm very grateful that I've had opportunities and um you know it's great to feel wanted here especially the team with the team that's you know, playing in the in the playoffs. So I guess I'm just going to take it as it comes for right now. But, you know, very, very grateful to the Cardinals for giving me a chance to be a head coach and certainly uh, very appreciative of what Michael and everybody there did for us. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll always be a fan of the Cardinals, and I appreciate, Dave, you taking the time to speak, to talk to me. Well, absolutely, man. I And you know this, I think the world of you as a person – uh, and also as a coach. So whatever the next step is, whether it's staying in Tuscaloosa or going elsewhere, NFL, head coach, in college, pros, whatever it may be, I hope it's what you want and you get to continue to do what you want. Uh, you've earned that and deserve it, and uh, I appreciate you taking the time to, to join me. Well, I appreciate it, Dave. As long as I get to see you coming in here and, and just chopping us up when we don't do right, I guess, <laughs> I guess it's all good. <laughs> Yeah, well, that day that I had you guys was a little scary, too. That was Arkansas. They fought back. That was a little bit of a scary game. But Jalen Milrow made a great play at the end of the game, and it's kind of been neat to watch uh, his growth and progress. And uh, I can't wait to watch that game against Michigan. you got two blue chips, two heavyweights going at it. And I personally, and I took a lot of heat from this from my other ESPN colleagues, I, I and I'm not just saying this because you're sitting here on the pod, but – I thought you guys should have been in ahead of Florida State, and people are still mad at me for that, but I'm going to stand by that, and I would not be surprised at all if you're hoisting that trophy uh, in mid-January. 
that would be really cool. And I, I think we're just, we're grateful that we got in, you know, it was a, uh, listen, it was, it was tough after losing to Texas in the second game. And, and I'm going to tell you something, playing an SEC schedule is a tough thing. It's amazing to me what Coach Saban has done all these years and winning these championships because it's not easy. And, uh, you know, we walked out on the field against Georgia in the SEC championship, and you saw that team that had won 29, 29 straight games, I think it was. You were just like, holy cow, this is a good football team. So, you know, to be able to go through that and win it, I think, it makes me think a lot about um, us, even though I know Alabama has been very successful. It made me think a lot about us at the Cardinals, about we just played our game and got to the spot. Now let's see if we can finish it. Well, good luck to you guys against Michigan and hopefully beyond that in the championship game. And I know Cardinal fans are grateful uh, to hear from you and be able to relive some of those great memories from 10, 15 years ago. So thanks again, Ken. Appreciate the time. Thank you, Dave. It's it's. I appreciate the Cardinals fans. Every time I'm in Arizona, or you can't tell how many times people come up and have said things to me, and it it means so much. So appreciate it.